Look at that. Can you see it? Do you see? No, you just see dirty windows. So it's snowing. It's a beautiful snow. It's not supposed to accumulate, but still, I'll take it. It's nice to look at. Turn this off, but it's still on the cool down portion. It's taking a while. It'll turn off soon. Also, it smells like a hair dryer out here. I'm gonna do some pruning over here. And I just remembered I have a box of plants coming in the mail sometime today. Largely aquatic plants, but they're aquatic plants that can go like in your tank or you can keep them outside the water in a terrarium. I'm pretty sure I have a lot of plant orders for the tank and for terrariums coming. So I can't remember. At some point, maybe at the end of the video, there'll be a plant unboxing of some sort. My brain's a little scrambled between what's coming in. Lots of variegation in here. This is a pineapple, a variegated pineapple. It's a cutting I took from one a few years ago that fruited, and you know, when they fruit, the mother plant dies off, but this is one of the little youngins, the offshoots from that plant. Seems to be liking it over here. Color's pretty dark, so I think the light's okay for it. And the snow, so much snow. Y'all enjoying the snow? Comment down below. Have, oh, wait, actually, there's a big, bad snowstorm that's hitting the east coast. I think the day this video comes out. Y'all are fair and okay up there. From what I've been seeing on the news, it's gonna be pretty intense. I really hope everybody's okay. Well, probably power outages and slippy roads, all those things. It is nice and toasty out here. It feels so good. Plants are perked up, some new growth coming out of some of them already. It's only been like, I don't know, a day, no, like two days, I think, since the last video ended. And it is time to go ahead and start moving some things around, and putting things together, because it's it's long, long, long overdue. Oh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. Completely forgot about the intro. So I need to hang a light up here, which I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do right now, but I'm going to try. I could have sworn I had two extra lights, but I only have one. I think that I miscalculated when I bought the replacements for down here. I was thinking you could only link up eight of them, but you can link up 10. It doesn't matter. I did just give everything a water, so I'm going to let some of these have a soak. I'm gonna let all of them have a soak for a little bit longer before I start messing with them. So you see the water down there in those flood trays. Let them have a good drink from the bottom. And in the meantime, there's plenty of other things to do out here. You know, the Eureka Palms. They need some cleaning and some tidying. Lots of old pieces need to come off of their trunks. There we go. Popped right off. This is an interesting color. Kind of a scary one. The plant looks okay though. Spear's nice and firm in there, so I'm not really worried about it. But yeah, this is pretty much going to be the vibe of this video. It's just trying to get things going out here. Now that it's almost February at this point. I just really didn't want to mess with the plants too much before that heater was installed. Figured it would be best to go ahead and let things warm up and get toasty, give them lots of love and water so they'd be more rigid and firm and just sturdier plants before I start like pulling and doing stuff to them. Doing and stuff to them, that was well said. This, this has been bugging me for a while. Finally get that cut off of there. Oh, there we go. Got the new pump. New pump came in the mail. I don't know if you didn't watch last week's video, this was up and ready to go and then the old pump wasn't running and it's doing its job. Collecting lots and lots of leaves. The leaves, they break down once they've dried anyways, they break down, they release tannins into the water. Right now the water is crystal clear because I just refilled this. I used up all the water to, well to water the plants. I don't mind there being some leaves in the bottom because like I said, that helps release some tannins into the water, softens it up. Plants seem to enjoy it. So I don't go overboard trying to keep the water clean since there aren't fish in here anymore. And I don't really, I don't see a reason to mess with that or to worry about it too terribly much. And then the other thing that I'm debating and I'm not sure what I'm going to do here is this area. I accidentally knocked over a stromancy when I was watering. Water pressure that comes out of that pump is pretty intense. I have always had this table here, this folding table, and I would lift the Monstera up onto the table and then have some of my smaller crotons that were in like 10 inch pots along the table and other small plants, kind of like these trio stars that you see right here. But the majority of the plants that used to go on this table have all been moved up into like 14 inch containers. They've done a good amount of growing. They don't look so hot right now because it took three months to get some warmth in here but they're crotons, they'll be okay. They can lose all their leaves, they'll bounce back. 
but the whole point there is I don't know if I really still need to use this table because the Monstera has gotten too big to put up here. It just, it'll look ridiculous and it will shade absolutely everything around it. This thing's huge. It goes all the way from over here up into over there. And that might be, I don't know, probably an eight to 10 foot spread there from that point to that point. And then if this were up on the table, then that's all going to be all the way up here. Maybe, I, I don't know, I, it doesn't seem to make sense. But if I pull the table out, then I would scoot the Monstera over and then it's going to <laughs> take over this area here. Not that there really is anything important going on here. It's just water. I don't have anything going on there. I'm not like running hydroponics in there, but it could interfere with some of these plants, which I also need to rearrange. Some of them were just tossed up there when I brought the plants. Like this marginata. I don't know why that's over there. It does not need to be up there. Those are sturdy plants. This spot right here is for plants that like a really good amount of airflow and light and uh, just also what's pretty and just ends up there. It's a very warm, humid spot out here where the air moves constantly. So I have like the Prince of Orange philodendron there just because that's where it's always been and it's always done well. There's a Ciba Blue Pothos, which again, that just sort of ended up there. <laughs> I don't really know why that's there. I just set it there and it's been happy. So I'm gonna leave it alone. I have a Mandevilla back there that was doing great until I got the heater and then it was like, oh, the hell no, absolutely not. And just all of its old growth died off and it immediately started shooting up new growth from the bottom. So that's okay. You can't even see it. It's back there in this blue rippled pot. So I think it, even though it had a strong reaction to the heater, it, I'd say it's okay since it put up so much new growth so quickly. Oh. Yeah, I can pull this down. There's no reason for that plant to be taking space over there. We can, we can hang out over here with the other Dracaenas. So there's a better look at that Mandevilla. It's got the new growth pushed up down there. Has all this right here. The leaves do have some shininess on them, like sticky shininess, which tells me that I probably need to treat that. That's usually from an insect. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down, rub it through all the other plants in the process. That's fantastic. That's just great. Now, yeah, mealybugs, not shocked by that. Mealybugs tend to love these things. Yeah, that's what this is. Well, that's a mealybugs. So I'll clean this up and give it a spray. I'm gonna need some clippers, paper towel, why not? Q-tips and where's my rubbing alcohol? Does anybody know? The one thing is that nobody else is here. It's just, where's the, digging through my shelves. It's here somewhere. There it is. Not much left, gonna need to pick up some more of that. Yeah, the plant, going to need that too. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's looking, looking pretty gross. All kinds of nasty things going on here. Oh, and you gotta love the cloud of fungus gnats that come up when you start touching the surface of the soil. I have some sticky traps coming in the mail, so I'm not too worried about those. I'm gonna start clipping up high. Work my way down because some of this, even though it's brown, feels like it's still alive. Oh, it definitely is. There's growth all the way up there. Okay, so it's just thinned out in the middle, that's all. Okay, well, that looks much better. For the mealybugs, I just go through with a little cotton swab and some rubbing alcohol. Try and fluff up the end there, pull some of the cotton out, so makes it a little bit easier to dab it on. Get it nice and wet and go through and just start getting the mealybugs with it. I have come to a point with these little critters where I've just sort of accepted it. Everything I've tried, soap, alcohol, systemics, like nothing, absolutely nothing. Even like some really harsh chemicals that were used by a professional, not myself, nope. Nope, I have some sort of super strain in here, so. Just have to go through every now and then and treat things by hand. Okay, I ended up taking this inside and giving it a wash in the sink with some soapy water because of the aphids. I figured from the spotting and that shininess, that sappiness that was on the leaves that there had to be aphids on there, but couldn't find them. And then eventually I got to a section where there was a whole bunch with aphids. It's so much easier to just wash them off of the plant. This thing does not want to focus, so apologies if it's not in, it's not in focus. I'm sorry. It's just twigs, not missing out on much. That was something that I realized I was going to have to figure out 
of the first video I filmed planting seeds after this heater was installed was that the my overhead lighting is gone. I had to take my overhead lighting down to have the heater there. Can't have the heater blowing on the light. So I'll need to uh, go get some new lighting, tripod type lighting that I can just stand up. I have three out here, but it's not enough. You'd be amazed how much lighting it takes to keep things looking crisp and clean on camera and in focus. I mean, what is that? That's terrible. Since I already have it out here, I figure I may as well put some slow release in the pot and help give it a boost, get the plant going. One of the best things for disease prevention is just having your plants nice and healthy. This is a great soil blend that it's in. It's the Espoma potting mix with just a smidge of the latency compost blended in with it. Not very much and the plant really seemed to enjoy that over the summer. May as well go ahead and top dress that, get some of that blended into the surface of the soil. This helps give the plant a boost. It's a, it's palm fertilizer. That's the most ideal slow release, but you know, there's lots of good stuff in it and uh, it's what I have laying around. So a little handful of palm fertilizer, better than nothing. Here's the, it's an 8122, so a nice mild fertilizer. Actually one that I really do enjoy. It's gentle, but effective. It's not an overloaded fertilizer. So the other thing that I like to do with the plants, particularly the ones that grow up here in the corner, I like to put these liquid ant baits in there, which I try and do when I move them in. And I did it with some of the larger plants and just totally forgot about this one. The reason I do this is because, well, it's something about the water. I don't know what it is. It's just, you know, water, something, everything needs to live. The plants that get put up there in the middle always are just infested. So I figure since I have this here, may as well put one of those little baits there, it draws them in, they eat it, take it back to, their headquarters and it's, it's sad and unfortunate, but it's what we gotta do for the plants. Uh, over here in this crispy box that got wet because I went a little bit overboard. I was so excited to have this new pump and just, I got it wet. So this is a trellis. It's an adjustable trellis. I don't, there's a lot of pieces. I don't really, I don't know. Came with directions, but I'm not gonna use those. No, the directions are because they're, it's like a multi-function trellis. So you can have it up as the hoops or you can spread it out like a, lattice and different configurations. I'm not doing all that. I just want it to be straight up and down with the little loopies in it. All right, so from what I gather, these go down. Fine, I'll look at the directions. I don't really know what's going on here. All right, well, there wasn't much point. You're not gonna be able to read that. It, listen to these directions. They're fantastic. Two installation methods. Method one, use connectors to connect the stakes. Step two, snap the stakes to the U-clip. Step three, installation is complete. Okay, that's useful. It has these things in there and I don't know what these are for. I don't I don't know what to do with this. They aren't the U-clips. And the rest of this is written so small that I have no idea. Oh, I bet that the, those are probably to connect these pieces right here. And probably goes like this and then another. Okay, all right, figured that out. The directions could have just said, figure it out, idiot. It's not that hard. And it has these pieces that just go around here and you do this. All right. Snaps together. Thought I was done and then turned out I did not have this going up high enough. These parts already have some rust on them. Also, I thought this was plastic. It feels like plastic, but there's rust on it. So I guess it's not. Oh, this is a nifty feature. Can we see what's happening here? So I forgot to pull the growth in and I can just undo that. Pull it back into place. That's that is smart. Oh, good, the heater kicked back on. That's gonna be noisy. Okay, heater's off. It had to kick on. I have it set to kick on if it drops below a certain temperature. And I had to open the garage door to move some stuff out there to take the recycle. It doesn't matter, it doesn't, you don't care. Point is everything's warmed back up. So I got the mandevilla back there on this little support system. I didn't realize until I was done that there's apparently different pieces with different finials that go on top so they don't match. It turns out it's all right because I don't care. It looks fine. I'm going for function here, not necessarily appearance. That'll give it something better to crawl up in those three little pieces of bamboo. The plants that are here in the middle, these are the ones where if they get pests on them, I actually pull them down, remove them, and like really tediously remove them. Everything else I just spray. I'll use the cotton swab with the alcohol and spot 
with mealybugs. I do that like once a week. But in the middle, it's a lot harder to get to. So that's more of a once a month thing. I was very thorough there, so that should have helped. But now that I know that that was an issue, the aphids, mealybugs, I'll be on that like once a week. That's one of the things with mandevillas. They're not terribly hard to keep going during the winter time, but man, pests love them. Aphids and white flies especially, and also apparently the mealybugs. So I haven't been seeing a ton of the mealybugs out here so far this year. Usually they're an issue starting like mid-January into February. February is when things usually get really intense. It's mostly on the Eureka palm. That's the plant that the mealybugs just absolutely love. They love this plant. One of the things I do to try and combat that is I usually come in here and keep most of the lower foliage pruned out. I just, well, fell behind and haven't done that, but that would be a good idea, I think, to come in here and get all the stuff cleared out from the inside, because that's, that's where the devil lives. It's where all the pests, where all the bad stuff starts to happen is down in there. The airflow is a lot better with the additional fan from that heater up there, so maybe that won't be a... No, I was gonna say maybe I don't need to. I think I should still do it, just to be safe. So the other thing that I forgot with the shelf is I usually have my begonia over here. The begonia, the last two years, has done wonderfully in that spot, and it's, it's not really liking where I have it right now. It doesn't look terrible, it's still flowering, but I think it's just a little bit chilly over here. These windows need to be replaced, they're kind of drafty. Of course, the new heater should be helping with that, but yeah, like this is still pretty wet and I just watered that like two days ago. It really shouldn't be wet anymore, so I think that this would enjoy being moved over. Oh, poor thing. Oh, it's actually not that bad. Just a little bare from the inside. I was thinking that this was all squish, but it's nice and firm. Not seeing any bugs, so that's a good sign. I think I could probably just plop this on over there. Oh, well, there's the problem. The table's bowed in, so it was sitting in water. Good to know. I have to drill a hole in the table, which is fine. And then this, now this one is looking more sad. This is the canary wing begonia. Hello, focus, what's wrong with my camera today? I know I shouldn't over personify things, especially when it comes to technology, but I swear there are days where it just works flawlessly and then there are days where it's just, it didn't come to work. I think it has something to do with shifting from dark to light to dark to, I don't know, it doesn't matter. So this is a canary wing begonia that I did a lot of pruning on when I moved it in and when I potted it up. I think it might also maybe appreciate being over here. Perhaps, I don't know. At the very least it needs, it's been on the ground. They don't like that. It's not enough airflow down there. They can go fairly dry, but when they're down there on the ground, that's where things are more cool and they just don't dry as well. So I'll either pick out a spot over there or over here, the thing is the metanella, that's this plant right here in the middle, it really is shading things. And I've never had this in the spot. Usually I would have more stuff up here, but it just, it's gonna cast such a shadow on the other plants. If I put the canary wing begonia on here, it'll have to go behind that and I won't really even be able to see it. And I'm down a light because I had to redo my timer. But that's a whole nother story. I had to redo all my timers. The ones that were up there, this, the lights all plugging up there broke so i went ahead and switched over to a wi-fi system that can control my phone because otherwise the way i had to mess with the lights before or operate them was i had them just on a regular like one of those timers that's um you dial and you like move the prongs around which worked okay but the problem with those is eventually like they start to wear out so i switched over to a digital one which also worked fine but it's a pain in the butt to reprogram i have to reprogram it often and he told me I lost power out here, which shouldn't be an issue anymore. Happy about that. So a problem with those timers is that this being plugged into the ceiling, that's where it has to go for the electricity, for the breaker that's available for this much wattage is right there. If for some reason I needed the lights on when they wouldn't normally be on, I had to get a ladder out and climb up there and turn the dial and then when I was done, go and turn that off. That was a pain. So I switched over to a Wi-Fi one that runs off 15 amps, which is enough for what I have out here so I can just use my phone to toggle them on and off. That's neither here nor there, but now you're filled in on the light timers. I think they turn on at eight and go off at 9.30 or 10, somewhere in there. I was short a plug, so these two lights aren't on anymore. I need to replace that bulb up there too. So I just don't know if there'll be enough light back there for the other begonia. I mean, it's gonna be more lights than it was getting sitting on the ground. Well, it's near some grow lights, but still, hmm. I have to think on that. What I should think about is how to get this other light up and running again. That would be the most helpful thing here. Okay thinking time, thought about it for a while, 
You can't even really see those outlets up there. It's very hazy in here, super humid. So I went ahead and just ordered different ones that I can plug two different things into so I can run the other set of lights. That's what's going on there. That should be here in a couple of days, so it won't make it into the vlog. So I guess next week we'll be working on lighting, which is good because I have four more grow bulbs, the Sansi grow bulbs, the ones that I use up here that I really like. They were out of stock for a long time, then they finally got them back in stock, and then they were on sale, so I got like four or five more of them. I'm going to set up another light right around here, because this front area, it gets okay light, but I might move some of the plants that like some more light that are back there up towards the front. Now, I'm still trying to wrap my brain around this. A little background, now that we're like, what, I don't know, 10, 12, 15, who knows how long this video is so far, I have no idea. but. I have traditionally always set things up pretty much the same in here, but as plants grow, you have to make some changes. And with the monstera being so freaking huge, it just changes the way I have to do the layout in here and the way I can keep the plants. And I was thinking about it because the next thing I was going to work on after I put this begonia back there on the table was that I was going to uh, go ahead and take this table down and pull the monstera over. But I realized if I do that, not only is it going to probably pretty much block everything right here. It's gonna be in direct path of the heater. That's, uh, I don't think it's going to like that. So I guess the best thing to do would be to just leave it where it is. This table's two feet wide. If I were to bring this two feet over, then all these leaves, they're already almost over the water. They're gonna be out over the water right here and the air from the heater, which by the way, heater, it is in the most absolutely perfect location. It really, really has almost fell backwards there. I was stretching back to show you all the heater because the air comes through like right here. So it's not blowing on any of the plants. It's hitting the water. There's a lot of evaporation. So it's keeping the humidity up just from the angle that it's hitting things at. It's not too far over here. So if I'm sitting at the desk, it's not like blowing on me and drying me out. Like just the perfect spot, except I can't hang the orchids up. You said orchids hanging here. That's, that's not going to work. They wouldn't like the air that dry. The air gets nice and moist as it comes up off there, but when it comes out, it's pretty, pretty dry. So yeah, if this were over the water, then it's gonna get blasted by the heater in this spot. So that's not going to work. I'll think on it some more. There might be a different way I could configure it, but I really don't think there is. I think I'll just have to leave it where it is and hope for the best. It's always done better near the water. It's the plant that likes that moisture and humidity and I would always take its little runner roots and drop them to the water and it would just grow and be so happy but yeah i don't know what to do there i guess i could move the croton and put it behind the croton no no that's enough of that i need to focus on the shelves right now the plants are over there they're doing fine they're growing well over here is where things need some more attention shelf time but some rearranging to do these begonias right here these are both begonia whimsies and they're <laughs> they're doing well they're growing. Some of the leaves crisped up. I think they went through a little bit of a shock when I moved them underneath the grow lights, but they're looking very leggy. So these need to be pulled out and heavily pruned back. And actually, I think these could use a repot too. I don't think I'm going to have time to do repots for this video, but I'm going to line them up and we'll get to them in a couple of days in a different video. Oh, so scraggly. The fuchsia's doing well, seems to be loving life. This plant's been flowering pretty much since I brought it in. It took a little bit of a rest, but still going. Lots of new growth, not seeing any bugs. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's going to stay right there. So one of the things that I've been debating over here is maybe moving the shelf up just a smidge. There are these rungs here on the pole where the supports go in. If I bump that up to like right there, then I think it would be okay. The reason I have it where it is is because this doesn't have the top support on it because I need it to be open for the taller plants. And uh, my concern is that if I have this up too high, if there's too much distance between these two shelves and these poles on the side are going to bend inwards. I want to make sure that this is supported properly, but that really would be nifty to have this up just just a couple more inches. So I guess I'll come up here and, oh, okay. Another begonia that could use a repot. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, it's happy, it's growing. But uh, I would say that that needs a larger container for its roots, much larger container. It's about three feet tall in that little six inch pot. This oncidium up here, this thing, this orchid, I have had this for years and every winter it gives, the, prime example, gives me trouble. 
or I give it trouble. It doesn't enjoy the transition from outdoors to indoors, but it actually, despite that growth popping out right there, I think it's enjoying it more this year. This is a plant that I think would really benefit greatly from just being divided up because it's gotten to a point where it's really hard to keep this one hydrated and it's like choking its own growth out because it's gotten so big. No, nope, everything in there's still nice and firm. Just got some sad growth on it, needs some cleaning up, which isn't hard to do. The dead stuff normally just pulls right out of there. Really not as bad as I thought. It's just a lot of leaves in there. There's lots of little stuff that needs to be pulled out. It's important to do that so that the airflow is proper around the plant, but this is simple. This is easy to do. Breath of Vola orchid up here. It's been soaking, has some buds on it, which I don't know if you'll be able to see. Right in there, that's a flower bud, that kind of lighter green part. Love the breast of as they smell so good. All right, and then this guy that I don't remember the name of, but here it is. It threw a bit of a fit when I brought it in. The, what is it, Pseudoranthemum. Black varnish, but it started to pop out some new growth. Seems okay in all the little cuttings they're taking root and growing. I'm gonna snap that off, doesn't need it. Black coral colochesia. of mealybugs on it. I'd be really surprised if it doesn't. Okay, all right, I'm surprised. Looking okay, that's great. I have a banana up here that I am shocked with how well it's been doing, but this this one I already know is going to need a big cleanup. I'm gonna have to spray that one down. <laughs> and Ferris Mass Colocasia, which these always look pretty crummy during the winter time. It's not in focus, it doesn't matter, it looks terrible. Which is what I expect of that plant during the winter. All right, cleared that off. I'm gonna fiddle with this and see if I can bring it up any higher. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. May as well try though. Okay, that was really hard. I can't believe y'all let me do that. It wasn't really that hard. Took a bit longer than I expected though. I had to remove everything. And I was thinking I could just like pop it up and move one at a time. No, absolutely not. Have the ladder over here and the chains ready for the other grow light that's right here. I went ahead and clamped these pieces down. Let's see if you can even see what I'm talking about here. They're all tangled up in my hands. It doesn't matter. These pieces right here, they have an S-hook that goes through here and you slide the chains in. And the thing I <laughs> cannot stand about those is that if there's any slack at all, they just fall. Doesn't work well. So I went ahead and I put the S-hooks on here and clamped them together so that they can't do that and left it open so I could still loop it through on one end. And then I made a loop on these ends right here to go through these supports or these S hooks that are hanging up from the ceiling here. They're not in the most ideal spot for the grow lights, but that's where the studs are. So that's where it's gotta go. Really no other option there. I could like do a drywall anchor. I don't think that's necessary. I think it'll be fine right there. Might kind of stick. I'll put it up. We'll talk about it. Here we go. Look at that. So much room. Well, there's so much room down there and a decent amount of room up top. So some space up there for some more plants, which is good. That's how it's dark outside now. That's because this is quick and easy. This is so, it was so fun. The amount of fun I had doing this shouldn't even be allowed. No, uh, one of the lights ended up breaking. I mean, it still works, but it's doing the same thing the other old ones did where they just went dim like they weren't getting enough power and it was doing that as I was hanging it up and touching it like there was a wire moving around in there perhaps so I spent a long time I took the whole light apart and I was trying to see if I could figure it out and then realized I'm not an electrician and I shouldn't be doing this so I put it back together and it's fine because I have to go get another light anyway so I will do that. The thing about these lights the plants seem to enjoy them but it's only been three years and I've had to replace three of them already now four that's not, I mean, that's not great, but at least the plants do like them. So there's plenty of room up here for some more taller plants. There's only the one light up here instead of two. That's because there's, I, I didn't really know how to get another one hung up there. I, I mean, I could, I suppose, go ahead and like take a two by four and brace it between the ceiling studs that are up there and then set a separate hook up there and have them right next to each other. But I just don't really think that's necessary, right? But I don't know why I would do that because the plants that are up there had been doing fine this entire time with just the little bit of light they were getting through the window. So this is only going to help that 
Uh, we'll see what happens because if it is really warm over here, which it's not, it's not super toasty near the window because that window is very drafty. It needs to be replaced. If it is really toasty over here, then they're going to want to grow more. So they're going to want better lighting. Otherwise they're going to be all stretched. So we'll just have to wait and see if it comes into it. I just told you, we can figure it out. I can get another light hung up there. That's no problem. It'd be a pain in the butt, but we can get it done. So this feels nice. This is good, having this done. We'll plenty of space on the bottom shelf, more than enough room up top for some taller plants, and then I have a good amount of room left over there as well. The begonias, when I repot those, will probably end up over there on top of that plastic container because they usually do well over there, so really no reason to keep them over there. I know they do well over there, and then have some room down low for some propagations or some different plants. I don't know, so many options now. This one's going to hang out here until I can get behind here when I get the plants moved out in a couple of days to get behind there and do a whole bunch of just fun things. Rearranging and reorganizing. Looking forward to it. I am going to keep the stromanthes over here. There's room for them on the shelves, but I enjoy having them here. Like, they just look pretty. And it's fun. Like, they're going to sleep. I don't know why the lights are still on, but they know what they're doing. Usually every night around six or seven, they start to kind of fold up and do their thing. They're pre-programmed. They don't seem to care about the grow lights. They know when they're tired and ready to go to sleep. It's nice to be sitting at the desk again. I haven't done this in a long time. Well, I did it a few days ago to film a video, but that was pretty quick in and out. It is missing something though. I don't have all my little trinkets. I need to get those out here. I didn't think it would be a great idea to put all my little decorations on the desk when I was doing all the repots and those things. I do have this though. Yep. Here we go. That's perfect. That looks great there. <laughs> Oh, that's so stupid. Oh, I'm not really going to keep that out here. It'd get wet and fall apart. That was a Christmas present from my little sister. Pumpkin, the royal kitty. Yep. The last clip I recorded where I was over there doing a whole bunch of stuff, the camera randomly turned off and turned back on and said it had to rewrite my memory card and ask someone to recover details. So hopefully, hopefully everything is still usable. Yeah, that there was a problem. It was like a 20 minute long video clip that's just not working. This one right here, that one, not supposed to look like that. Did figure out what the problem was though. There's a dial on my camera that holds the battery pack onto the camera and it was loose. So when I was moving the camera up to look at the heater out in the garage, it was basically disconnecting the battery. I don't understand why the clip I lost wasn't the one that I was actually filming though. That's bizarre, but, but it's fine. It's all right. We can just go outside and make up for it. Because what's missing is kind of nice stuff to have because it's about what's going on with those shelves and the plants that are on there and some other things that are going on. Hey Toby, hey baby, and you too. He's so cute. Love you, Turbo. You see how big he is? He's almost as tall as the table. He can walk up to the table and just rest his chin right on the edge, which I'm you know, not a fan of that. So far, he hasn't messed with any people food though, so it's been going okay. Pumpkin, where are you? People are going to want to see you. Pumpkin. Okay, all right, there she is. You see, Pumpkin, I have a Toby nose in my ear right now. Toby, stop. Stop, Toby. <laughs> You're very sweet, Toby, but I don't need your nose in my ear. So this is going to make the video kind of rough and bumpy, going from dark to light and then back to dark. That's okay. I figure it's only right. If you've been watching the video and then I spend this time messing with the shelves, you probably want to see some of what happened with them. So here we are. It's light outside and then it's going to be dark again towards the end of the video when I'm unboxing some plants. So I had moved a bunch of what was over here to over here and a few things from over here, over there. Clearly much more room down on the bottom, which is great if I want to get some more propagations going or maybe move a few other things over. Bought some more kangaroo paw ferns over, the mature kangaroo paw fern, the anthurium. This was on the other table and it's doing well. It's flowering, seems happy. But what's weird is that the flowers are more of a red tinge. They used to be like a really vibrant hot pink. So that could just be a difference in lighting. Normally I have this anthurium over here where the lighting's a little bit less intense. Not quite as strong when it's all the way down there on the table you know, as opposed to when it's just right below some lights. So that may have something to do with this. But when it's outside, it just gets like dappled morning light during the summertime and it puts up the big hot pink one. So. That does probably have something to do with the light intensity. Plant's looking fine, so I'm not worried about it. Lots of new growth. Still need to put a support on it. I've been saying that for like two years. I'll try and make that a priority. 
this winter, or probably spring would be better. We'll see how warm things stay over here. Good amount of space here. I did lift this up just a little bit higher than I had planned on. So it was this rung right here, or this support, I don't know what you would call it. The bottom of the shelf was right down here. You can just barely see this double line. So it's, I don't know, four inches, something like that. It's enough space to give them some distance between the grow lights. Also, interesting, the grow light that wasn't working last night, it, it's fine now. I don't know what the problem was. I, d I have no idea. There's been some weird stuff going on with me and technology over the last few days, like those Wi-Fi plugs. Ones I was telling you all about that I put up there for the, the light, the light timers. Well, when those showed up in the mail, I spent like two and a half hours trying to get them connected. And it just wasn't happening, which is weird because the Gobi products they connect very, very easily. I've never had an issue getting them to connect before. And uh, I eventually just, like, just gave up. I was like, well, I'll just send them back, contact a customer support. And they said to uninstall the app and reinstall, which I was like, oh, absolutely not. Because I have so many things from Govi. It would take me like a full day to reconnect absolutely everything. Well, probably not, it would probably take like half an hour, but I feel like doing it. That's like when you get a new phone and you have to redo all the apps and everything. No, I don't want to do that. And it turned out I didn't have to. I woke up in the morning and they connected. I don't, I don't, what's that about? I have no idea. I had two other things come in the mail that day. They were digital thermometers. Well, one was a laser held one, so I could keep track of some temperatures over here without having to rely on the Wi-Fi and those things and one for the water. None of them worked. I, I, what, it doesn't matter. That's neither here nor there. They all work now. Don't know what happened. They just started working. Maybe there's a solar flare. No idea. Plants, looking good. Orchids towards the back, the Lelias, they're good with those cooler temperatures that are coming through that drafty window, which was something I meant to talk more about. So I did spend a good amount of time last night going through it and trying to like detect where the air was leaking through and it's mostly coming through the bottom. So I'm going to have to foam this. I think like you can even almost see through it. That window's got to that's got to get replaced. So I think I will just foam it. I'll pick some up at the hardware store next week when I go out to get the other grow light that I may or may not put there. I'm not sure. If not, then it's going to go over here and then I can move the cactus and succulents that are on this shelf, at least the ones that don't need much water. Those can go all the way up there because a lot of these cactus and succulents, they just get a little drink like once a month and that's pretty much it. At least with the Pylocerius back there, the Epiphyllums, they get more than that. The geranium, spent a long time talking about that in the clip that was lost. This plant's just been fantastic. Why have I not been bringing geraniums inside during the winter time? I've had to do next to nothing for this plant and it's still flowering. And it, you can tell I've done next to nothing with it because it doesn't look fantastic, but it's still flowering. And it has new buds coming out. It has new growth starting to come up on it. I should probably give it a prune, but the flowers are so pretty, I don't really want to. That geranium spent about, I don't know, maybe a week and a half on the ground because I had to move a lot of the plants that were on the shelf down to the ground when I was working with some plumbing things over here, and then there was some watering stuff going on where I didn't want water moving from the lights to the lights that don't have the trays set up over here because most of the plants that are over here don't get watered that often. It's pretty simple just to set them on the ground to water them. Anyways, there's not a ton of light right to where that geranium was and it, it didn't care. Just kept doing its thing. Been a lovely, sturdy plant. Also found lots of spider webs. Need to do some spider management out here. Actually, I probably would just leave the spiders help eat the other critters. The hibiscus that was over there, I moved over here and I realized when I moved it that I had apparently missed it when I watered. It is very dry and very thirsty. So I need to actually, since I'm out here, I'll just take this over to my desk so I don't forget to water it. The other aloe cases that are out here doing well, I keep these more on the dry side. And they've always been totally fine with that during the winter, that is, during the summer. They get plenty of water. The Taniki Elastica, that's, I mean, it's fine. It's not a plant I'm too fond of, so I haven't done much with it. I should go ahead and repot it and do something else with it. And the maxillaria that's back there is oddly dry. That was another thing that I talked about in the clip that was missing, that, well, not missing, the corrupted file, was that the way I had things set up wasn't, well, it didn't make any sense because y'all know, I just like tossed the plants on the shelves when I moved them in and was waiting to get things going. But it, you can't have big plants sitting in front of other plants. They have to go in the back or else they won't get the water like this one and that one. So they were blocked. They're going to get a nice big drink. And I think that brings us up to speed other than I did a lot of pruning, pulled the dead foliage out from that Pharaoh's mask and 
There's a little bit on that Colocasia, and the banana, it just had one bad leaf. So I left it because it doesn't have much to work with right now, so I figured I should let it have all of its devices for growth, meaning the few leaves that it has. And then I talked, I should set this down. I need to be shaking this poor thing all over. Actually, you know what, here you go. Have a drink, there you go. Get some water in ya. So then I talked about the four begonias down here that need a prune and a repot. I'm going to wait on doing those, especially now since this video is gonna come out very late since the file is corrupted. But it's supposed to be like 52 in a couple of days. Right now, I, I think it's eight or 10 degrees outside, but in just a couple of days, it's going to be in the 50s. And only for a day or two, it's going to be like negative five. Been a fun winter. Whole point there is that I will have more room to push some things outside that aren't normally even in here that long, like the windmill palms. If these are normally outside but for a good chunk of the winter time, but this is, hey, hold on, what's going on here? Look at that. Seriously, there's like no light over here. I moved you inside and you're like, I'm gonna flower. That's really exciting. I have had this plant for so incredibly long. I don't know what's going to come of the flowers, what's going to happen with them, but that's exciting when you have something for such a long time and to finally get to see something coming of it. And it's, there's one, two, three, I think there might be a fourth up in there and there's might be some more on the others. I can't, okay. Really excited about that. I will do my best to pollinate and save those seeds. So the windmill palms, when it drops below 10, I like for them to be inside. They've been inside for like three weeks now. Normally they're not in here for more than two weeks at a time, but the weather is just like it's all over. It will be 50 one day and then like literally negative five or 10 even, 15 the next day. They've been in here in the dark, which normally isn't an issue. It's normally only for a couple weeks. They've never seemed to care. Been doing this for like a decade. It's been all right so far. So anyways, there's a lot of things taking up space that make it hard to navigate around to the other side of the grow space. That's why I was focusing on this side right now because I need to wait for it to warm up so I can scoot some of the other plants outside for a couple of days. That'll make room for me to get around in here and manage the tropical plants and to go outside and do some repotting. I would just prefer to, if I have some repots to do, to do it outside. It's a lot easier to manage with the cleanup and everything if that's outdoors. Might be doing a repot on that big croton. It has become very difficult to keep this plant hydrated. Like the amount of water that goes into keeping the plant hydrated is wasteful at this point. The water just hits the surface and goes right out the bottom. Extremely sharp drainage. Uh, sometimes drainage can be, you can have too much. That's what's going on here. I don't think I would want to bump it up in a pot size this time of year. Oh, it's so warm, but the I don't know. I'm gonna think on that. What I will probably do is just lift the plant up and put some fresh soil in the bottom because it has like a five inch lip from where the soil has gone down. So that'll have a nice moist layer of fresh soil in the bottom for the roots to go down into. And then I can do a bigger repot on it where I would actually like somewhat disturb the roots and move it into something larger in the spring. Well, more towards summer when it's nice and warm outside. Okay, I think that's about it. I was just going to let it go and not mention that there was a broken clip, but it was, it was like 20 minutes. I did summarize it quite a bit just now. I figured we'll go through here and have like a house plant tour at some point and do a closer look at things. But it's nice to have a look at them and see what they're looking like now so that when we do a plant tour, we'll get Another look at the, the lickety split philodendron. This has done a lot of growing. I really do like this plant. It's been very simple, very low maintenance. And I'm not, I wasn't supposed to, okay, back to what was happening. I think uh, probably opening up the plant box, plant unboxing. I got the box of plants. This came, I don't know why, it's not live animals. It's just plants. Very, very well packaged. There's a box. Within a box, there's a bunch of stuff with my address and information on it that I'm gonna take out of there. And it's lined with styrofoam, styrofoam all the way around, top and bottom, heat pack that's actually still warm, still nice and toasty. And I say they're putting pretty much everybody else I've ever ordered plants from to shame. This is really nice. So uh, some of these are aquatic, well, they're all technically aquatic plants. Some of them are for my fish tank, some of them are for terrariums. So these are all little dwarf water lettuce plants, floating plants, float around the top of the aquarium. Kind of like duckweed, but these get a lot bigger. It grows very prolifically. The dwarf water lettuce has really nice long roots that will drape down into the water. Provides some protection for fish fry. Kind of looks nice. Some shady spots in the tank helps block out some of the light. Those are for a shrimp tank. I should mention where this is from. This is from Flip Aquatics. So they're here on YouTube, shrimp breeder. 
I think they're in Ohio, I believe. And this is, this is the best packaging that I've seen. I've had uh, three or four different aquatic plant orders come in over the last couple of weeks. And this is, this is definitely the winner. I've ordered from aquariumplants.com, uh, Boost Plants, and uh, Aquatic Arts, who also had great packaging on their plants, but this is by far the best. And again, those were all mixes of plants that are going to go in terrariums or fish tanks. I think everything that's left in here, there are a couple plants for the fish tanks, but a lot of these are for a terrarium. You'll, you'll hopefully get to see it here in a few weeks. Oh, These look pretty nice. These are bronze cryptocorns. It says bronze wenti. I saw cryptocorns in the fish tank, generally pretty sturdy plants. They don't really like to be moved around, but usually a good plant for beginners. This particular one has a really nice bronze foliage on it that gets kind of wide when they're bigger. There's another one, I ordered three of them. They look pretty good. I'm not going to bother taking them out of the bags. I'll do that when I take them inside. Oh, this is a plant I was excited about. So another cryptocorn, just call them crypts in the aquarium hobby. You see that? Hopefully you can see it. These are spiralis. So these have a totally different look from most of the other crypts. They have a really long blade on them so they'll move in the water and more of a background plant. A good sturdy background plant. I like the Sprallus a lot. There's another one of those. I'd ordered three of those. And then the rest of these are for terrarium. When I say terrarium, I mean like super high humidity terrarium. So these can be grown in the water or out of the water, generally partially submerged. So this is narrow leaf java fern. And this one, it's in the family of some really common house plants. It's a microsorum. Just like the, uh, well, the kangaroo puffer, one of my favorites, that's also a microsorum. That's a big family of plants. And you can kind of see the similarities there when you look at it. So java fern, another great plant for fish tanks if you're new and don't have high lighting. Slow to grow, but pretty sturdy. Oh, I got those to use in a terrarium, so those won't even be in the fish tank. I might take a clipping from a rhizome, put into a tank. But for the most part, they're going to be grown out of the water. And then another really common aquarium plant, Anubius nana petite. The petite making it smaller. Anubius nana, already a smaller plant. Well, these are tiny. Open that one up so you can have a better look at it. Aren't they cute? With tiny little delicate leaves. Anubius is another great plant for your tank if you're a beginner or you have low light. You're not doing CO2 injections. They'll do well with an advanced aquarium. But they're sturdy enough that they don't have to have it. But slow to grow. So this is another plant that works really well if you want to grow a, like a fish tank plant outside of the water. Common one too, you might even see these at the big box pet stores sometimes. They have to stay moist, can't let them dry out. So that's those. There's a third one right there. So I had three of those as well. There's three of those Anubius nanas. These are pretty good sized clumps. This one doesn't have much going on it, but the others, there's lots of little babies in there. I could divide that up and get that to, well not, I was gonna say I could get it to spread really well, but not really because they grow so slowly, but they'll make nice little patches on the woodwork and wherever I end up sticking them in the terrarium. Yeah, that's a solid 10 out of 10 on packaging. This is the best packaging I've had on plants, like, I think ever. It, they sell aquatic livestock too, so it makes sense that they would know how to really package things to keep them warm. But when I see something like this, and then I think about the condition house plants are shipped in in the winter time. I'm like, really? Gotta do better. I get it though. I mean, there's a very big size difference, but there are plenty of online sellers for house plants where they're just selling little terrarium plants. This would totally be doable. I mean, how many times, at least for myself, I couldn't even tell you how many times I've been on Etsy and thought, oh, that's a great plant. I'm going to order it. And then they like, they don't offer a heat pack or they're just like, hey, if the weather's bad, it's probably gonna die, but I'm gonna ship it anyways. Like, what? You're gonna charge 80 bucks for a plant that's like this big and then you, you're too lazy to throw some foam in a heat pack in your box? I don't, I don't like that. That's lazy. When you think about it during the winter time, the amount of people in the US who can safely order plants, it's, it's a pretty narrow range. You know, along the coast, probably zone eight and up, eight, nine, 10. You probably don't really have to worry too much about weather conditions cold wise. Well, this year is a little bit different. I think it's supposed to be pretty cold in Florida as this video is coming out, but typically not a huge problem. Whereas where I live, once like November hits, I'm like, Nleh. can't order houseplants anymore because nobody packages them very well. I know the risk and I'm not willing to take it. Even big companies like Logies did a video on that a couple of years ago. They shipped some plants out when it was horribly cold, no heat pack, nothing. And 
pretty much everything showed up dead. And they were like, no, oh, too bad. All right, end of that rant. We've all, we've been there, talked about that before. I really, I like this. This is good. And like I said, I know that this type of packaging, not practical for big plants, but there are plenty of plants that get shipped small and this would, this would be doable. I think part of it, I said I was done, I'm not. I, part of it is that when you start charging more for something, like I don't even care about the supply and demand aspect of it. When charging a lot of money for really tiny little plants, house plants that is, these were all very reasonably priced. House plants are still absolutely insanely expensive compared to what they were a few years ago. And I understand why. With the inflation, it would be nice to take it sweeten the deal a little bit. Like make it so that your plants are well packed and flying through the boxes and showing up half dead or just cold. And a lot of the, like the people on Etsy do offer heat packs, which I do appreciate, but it's usually just like thrown in the box with the plant and that doesn't really do much, right? Like double box it, some foam or, extra extra paper in there at least with the heat pack inside of that but not in contact with the you know, it's a whole thing end of rant these plants look fantastic i'm excited to get the ones into the tank that are going to the tank and the rest of them i'm really excited to get working with i'm really excited about getting to work on the well, a different project that you all will get to see but that's what i need all these other aquatic plants for i'm gonna get those taken inside it's starting to cool off out here i had to turn the heater off for filming Oh, it's 12 degrees outside. Can't leave that off for too terribly long. So I should go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed my little rant. It was totally unnecessary. Like I said, it's not really practical to do this sort of packaging for larger plants, but a lot of the plants are little. Oh yeah, and Flip Aquatics, I will link their YouTube page down below or their website, maybe both. If you have a fish tank, great place to order from and apparently pretty safe too, because they do a great job with their packaging. And I said the prices on these were pretty good. Very well done. Very happy with these plants and with that order. Comment down below, where y'all ordering from this time of year? You know anybody who has like really great packaging and shipping when it's cold outside? I don't. Why there aren't really very many plant unboxings this time of year. I would like to order plants. I'd, like I have an order I want to do, but I'm just like, ugh. I can't trust the weather. It's been so weird this year. Normally it's like, it'll be crazy cold for a couple of weeks and then normal temperature for a few weeks and then another week of really cold and then normal. Whereas, like I said before, this year it's like five degrees one day, 50 the next. And that's, that's I, don't, I don't know what to do with that <laughs> other than just don't order plants. I think that's the safest thing to do. Though with the aquatic plants, I, I know that they know how to ship things because they come from places that also sell fish. So that, I haven't had any bad orders come with aquatic plants. And it's a shame too, because there are so many occasions, even this past November, it's like November hits and then companies start contacting me and they're like, hey, get on our website. You can pick out like $800 worth of plants and we'll send them to you and you can promote them and offer a, a discount to subscribers. And I get so excited. But then I'm like, it's 25 degrees outside. I think this is a bad idea. I don't want y'all to send me a box of plants, have them die, and then I can't, like, what am I supposed to do with that? A lot of my frustration goes back to that sort of thing. I'm just jealous of y'all who can order plants all winter long. Like I'm having the begonia over here again. Looks nice. The pretty flowers that drape over there. Sarah, can I like turn the eye? That didn't help at all. That looks bad. Feels more right. I've always had, at least for the past few years, had the dragon wing begonia over here and it's always done well and flowered and then I just need to get my, <laughs> I need to get my freckles croton over here and handle this side of the grudge. So I'm looking forward to doing, and I'm looking forward to doing some repots. It's gonna feel nice. Get my hands into some soil, help soothe the urge. Not that much longer till spring, but February, usually that last stretch whew, gets rough. With the temperatures out here, don't think that's gonna be an issue. So many things to do out here since the plants will actually grow and not just sit still. Again, thanks for hanging out. Get some more fun things done next week. Gonna have to go to the hardware store. That should be fun. I yeah, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life. Focus. And everything's just going beautifully for you. And you know, all y'all up in the Northeast with just the East in general with all the snow. Hope you're staying safe and I'm so sorry. For those of you down in Florida, if this cold snap ends up being as bad as they're saying, I would be absolutely devastated. Hopefully it's very brief and that you're able to protect the plants and get them inside and that it works out okay. Oh, that's so pretty. See why I'd want to keep that over here? Beautiful pink in the evening as the leaves curl up and then during the day they're down and you get that pretty white, which just really kind of lightens up the whole area having the light with the roof. I said I was going to grow. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.